Okay, welcome. For this lecture, we are going to be looking at uh, basics of blood, uh, more specifically blood typing. Before we get started and talking about how you type blood, which we'll be doing in our lab, first we need to talk about the components that make up blood. First, we have the red blood cells. Those are called the erythrocytes. It has a protein. We'll look at some other proteins also. But hemoglobin is going to carry our oxygen to our cells, and so eventually it will go to the lungs and then be distributed out to the different cells in our body. White blood cells are called leukocytes, and that's going to help fight infection. Plasma, so we'll be referring to this also. So the red blood cells and plasma is what will be involved in the blood typing. So it's a liquid portion of the blood, has vitamins, nutrients, hormones, clotting factors. Another clotting factor is called a platelet. It's another component of our blood. Those are called thrombocytes. And so when your blood coagulates, it helps to seal a wound and prevent any additional blood loss. So here's a little few blood facts. Um, adult human body has approximately five liters of blood. And so sometimes if you watch the CSI shows, they will talk about how much blood was lost, and if they're continuing to lose a lot of blood, then usually they can find the victim within a proximity of so many yards, feet, miles away from the site. Now, blood is a living tissue. It is classified as a tissue because it carries oxygen and nutrients to different parts of the body. And in two to three drops of blood, there are one billion red blood cells. So we're going to be looking at what's called the antigens and the antibodies that's found on the blood cells. Those are proteins. So we'll be talking a lot about these red blood cells. Now, blood typing, you may have done this in your biology class or genetics. Just like your genes are carrying and passing on heredity from parent to offspring, the same thing is for the blood type. So you're going to get one gene from your mother and one gene from your father. Now, I mentioned antigens and antibodies. Um, there's a particular protein called agglutagens, and that is an antigen. And so it is found on the surface of the red blood cells. So that's going to be very key. Make sure you know that. Antibodies is found in the plasma, the liquid portion. And those are also proteins. So we're going to be looking at how they work together. Um, you have negative effects if they work against one another. Now, blood types. Um, if you did the genetics, uh, you may have seen the term alleles before. So for blood types, there are three particular alleles, and it's how they're grouped together on the type of blood. The alleles are A, B, and O, and since we have two genes, there are a total of six combinations. So for type A, and this is in red, here's an allele A, A, and A, O, we'll type for type A. B, 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 O, type B, O, O is type O, and A, B is type A, B. So if I was to put this into a diagram, I can see here the red concave, biconcave, is a red blood cell. And so the genotype for it, AA and AO, the pheno, what it looks like, it will have these A's are the antigens or the A agglutagens, those are the proteins. On the type B blood would have the B antigens, AB would have a combination of AB, and you notice O does not have any antigens. Those proteins are not on the surface of the red blood cell. Now, when you compare the antigens and the antibodies, not only are they located, one is on the red blood cell and one is in the plasma, but how they connect will determine whether they clot. Um, it's very beneficial on blood typing, but not so much if you are doing a blood transfusion, because obviously you don't want any clotting factors when you're receiving blood. So here is type A blood. The antigen on the surface of the red blood cell is the A antigen. Notice they just made a little symbol here, a little green square. In the plasma is the antibody anti-B. Now you notice it's the opposite, okay? So here, if you look at it very closely, it's like a little cup shape. It is not going to fit on the A antigen. So if they don't fit together, they're not going to clump, which is very important. So if you have type A blood, you can obviously receive from a person who has type A and type O, and you can donate to someone who has A and AB. Now, what I'm saying is kind of written out more on the side. 
Now, if you have type B blood, you have the B antigen on the surface. You notice there's a yellow dot. And now the anti-A antibodies is a square, so they're not going to fit together and they will not clump. So you can receive from B and O, donate to B and AB. Now, AB blood has both of the antigens, A and B, but no antibodies. So because of that, they can receive blood from all four. So we say those are the universal recipients. Type O blood has none of the antigens, no proteins, but they have the antibodies. So we say that they are universal donors, okay? So it's how they fit together. And so when you're doing transfusions, you do not want that clumping. Here's just another visual, a little bit closer. Here they made symbols. Um, triangles is the antigen B. And then you can see how they fit together. Um, so you can pause that if you want to. So I mentioned blood transfusion. So what you need to know is that type O is a universal donor, so they can give to A, A, B, and B. And type AB blood can receive from all of them, so they're the universal recipients. Now we haven't talked about positive and negative. So there's really eight possible blood types. And the positive and negative comes from another protein on the surface of the red blood cell, and it's the RH. So RH positive, RH negative. Now where the RH comes from is from the rhesus monkey. And it's not because that protein is found in the monkey, it's because when scientists were studying, they discovered a new protein in the rhesus monkey, and so therefore they named it after him with the abbreviation. So it's just the name of the blood protein, and they named it after the rhesus monkey. So if you have the protein, it's positive. If you don't have the protein, it's negative. It's one or the other. It's not a combination. So positive, you have the protein. Negative, you do not have the protein. How common are the blood types? And this can be very useful in forensics. It, for example, let me pull all these up. So type O. In yellow is the type O blood, and then it's broken down by positive and negative. So we can see here that O is the most common, about 46%, and then A, and then B, and then AB. So if we have a sample found at the crime scene, and it's AB negative, that is very rare. So that would be very significant, and you'd probably want to do some follow-up and some DNA testing. I'm not going to ask you any questions on that. Now, we talked about if you find blood at a crime scene, you first probably need to determine is it human or not, and you've probably seen the little Q-tip, and they'll test it, and it turns pink on the CSI shows. Well, what they would do, they'd probably do that in the field first, but that's just an indicator if there's blood, if it's blood or not, or some other stain. But it doesn't tell them if it's human or another species, just like the hairs when we looked at it under the microscope. So the first thing they'll do, oh, excuse me, is they will look under the microscope. Uh, again, do not worry about colors. I always tell you don't focus on colors. Um, when you look at this, you can kind of see, well, you know, some like frog and fish and snake, there's very few cells when compared to like the bird and the dog and the human. So they look at the cells, the size of the nucleus, how many cells are in the sample, and determine if it's human or not. Now, they'll zoom in a little bit more and look at some other characteristics, but the number of cells per sample is what they'll start with. Then they'll also look at the blood sample themselves. So they'll do the typing and then the DNA. So kind of back up, if you find blood evidence at a crime scene, first you're going to look at the drops, which we've done that, see the movement and the weapon also, the spatter, so we can give a clue of where, what might have happened, and then we need to test the blood, and then we'll start narrowing it down is it the victim's blood? Is it a particular suspect? So we're not going to do the DNA testing in class, but we will do the blood typing. Okay, so when we get to the blood typing, um, we have been talking about this particular protein, a glutagen, a, a glutagen, sorry, A and B. Um, so agglutination is referred to if it clumps or not, and if you want to just use the word clumping, that's fine. So when we mix two chemicals together, and one is going to be the blood, and one is going to be the serum or the antibody serum, 
If they do not react, then there's no clumping, then it's negative. If it does clump, then it's positive. Now we're not saying that that's for the RH, but that's an indication that that's the type of blood. So let me jump over here and then I'll come back to this other diagram on the left. So in the wells, so you'll have a little plate in the well, I would add anti-A antibody. In the B well, I would add the anti-B antibody. Now, I would then add the same blood sample to each. If it is A blood, because remember the proteins, I would have the A antigen and I combined it with the antibody A. So the A and the A are together. If I put those two together, it's gonna clump because no clumping is the A antigen and the anti-B, so the two the opposite. So in this case, I can see, well, I've got clumping. Clumping would be, it looks granular, uh, kind of sandy appearance. Um, that would be the clumping. So here I have clumping. I also have clumping in the B. So that means this individual has type AB blood. If I come down here, again, I have my anti-antibody A, anti-antibody B, and I've got clumping in the B. So I added a particular blood sample to this, and I, this person has type B blood. This one has type A. This one is O because there's no clumping which means I presented and I have the antibodies A and B, but if it's type O blood, it doesn't bind to anything because there's no antigens on the surface of the red blood cell. So no clumping in either well means that it's O. So I, I come over here and this might be helpful when you take notes in your notebook. Uh, just a few little dots indicates that there's no clumping or you can kind of shade it together if you want to. And so this is clumping. So remember, clumping in the RH means it's positive, no clumping, it's negative. So looking at this first one, no clumping in the A, no clumping in the B, but I do have clumping in the RH. So that means it's O, O positive. Here I have clumping in the A, not in the B, not in the RH, A negative. So hopefully you can see, I'm explaining the proteins that are involved but the reading is actually pretty simple. If it clumps, that's what it is. If it's in the RH and it clumps, it's positive. That's really what you need to focus on. Okay, so let's just real quickly run through the blood typing testing that you'll be doing. Now these serums, the anti-antibody A and B and the RH, sometimes these are not the same colors. Um, this RH can even be green in color, but whatever the case may be, Whatever it's labeled, make sure you put it in the right, correct well. So first you're gonna add your serum. So I'll add the A serum or for the antibody in the A well, B in the B well, and RH in the RH well. That's very important. Then I would add one blood sample to all three wells because I'm testing the, that particular blood. Okay, so I'm looking for clumping. So in my A well, I do have a lot of clumping. So what that means is that my anti-A, which is my blue serum I added, is reacting or attaching to the antigen on the red blood cells, causing it to clump. I have clumping in my RH, so it's A positive. This is the same thing, A positive, just to show you the, not as much clumping, but it's still kind of gritty. Sometimes it's hard to see and you need to rock the particular uh, sample to see it. Okay, for my B positive, notice there's no clumping in the A, B positive. For my AB, I have clumping in A and the B and this is positive. AB, no clumping in the RH, that is negative. For O blood, no clumping in the A or B, because remember there's no proteins on the A or B, even though the anti-serum is present, nothing it can attach to. So this is O positive, this is O negative. So if you have a sample and no clumping occurs, sometimes it's always good, um, if you're not sure, maybe to rerun it, but if you have no clumping and you rocked it and you know you did all the chemicals correctly, you could very well have O negative. 
So like I said, we're going to do this in class. Um, first, we'll determine if it is blood, and we will be working with synthetic blood when we do the blood typing. So hopefully that helps, and I'll see you next time.